statutory warning. If you belong to the extra sensitive clan of modern day who gets offended by just about everything and anything, this episode is completely filled with sarcasm and cynicism and certain point of views that you might find outright offensive. If you can't deal with it, it's better that you stop right now. Thanks. Something seemed to tell me that I was on the verge of a terrible crisis in my life. I had a strange feeling that fate had in store for me exquisite joys and exquisite sorrows. I grew afraid and turned to quit the room. It was not conscience that made me do so. It was a sort of cowardice. Conscience and cowardice are really the same thing, Basil. Conscience is the trade name of the firm. That is all. Unquote. He likes me. I know he likes me. Of course, I flatter him dreadfully. I find a strange pleasure in saying things to him that I know I shall be sorry for having said. As a rule, he is charming to me. Now and then, however, he is horribly thoughtless and seems to take a real delight in giving me pain. Then I feel that I have given away my whole soul to someone who treats it as if it were a flower to put in his coat a bit of decoration to charm his vanity, an ornament for a summer's day. Unquote. I am pissed. The world is a shitty place and somehow everybody that you knew one way or the other is acting like an absolute moron to the point where you don't recognize them anymore. And dealing with all that crap with the already existing crap in my mind is making my head burst. Every time I find myself hating the very idea of people. That includes myself. I am not above anything. I have always found myself rereading The Picture of Dorian Gray by Oscar Wilde. What this book does for me? Let me show you. What the fuck is wrong with humanity? Humanity takes itself too seriously. It is the world's original sin. My country is full of bloody idiots. You don't like your country then? I live in it. You need not be afraid. Our countrymen never recognize a description. They are practical. They are more cunning than practical. When they make up their ledger, they balance stupidity by wealth and vice by hypocrisy. Still, we have done great things. Great things have been thrust on us. We have carried their burden. She shook her head. I believe in the race, she cried. It represents the survival of the pushing. It has development. DK fascinates me more. What of art? It is a malady. Love, an illusion, religion, the fashionable substitute for belief. You are a skeptic. Never. Skepticism is the beginning of faith. What are you? To define is to limit. Give me a clue. Thread snap. You would lose your way in the labyrinth. The people we hate. None of us can stand other people having the same faults as ours. People to avoid at every cost. I don't want to see him alone. He says things that annoy me. He gives me good advice. Pick one. Happiness or pleasure? I have never searched for happiness. Who wants happiness? I have searched for pleasure. And have you found it, Mr. Gray? Way too often. 
Of course, married life is merely a habit, a bad habit. But then one regrets the loss even of one's worst habits. Perhaps one regrets them the most. They are an essential part of one's personality. A cigarette is the perfect type of a perfect pleasure. It is exquisite and it leaves one unsatisfied. What more can one want? Where should sympathies lie? I can sympathize with everything except suffering. I cannot sympathize with that. It is too ugly, too horrible, too distressing. There is something terribly morbid in the modern sympathy with pain. One should sympathize with the color, the beauty, the joy of life. The less said about life's source, the better. Simplify shit, watch from a distance, be practical. And suddenly everything, every excuse becomes way more acceptable, doesn't it? Romance lives by repetition and repetition converts an appetite into an art. Besides, each time that one loves is the only time one has ever loved. Difference of object does not alter singleness of passion. It merely intensifies it. We can have in life but one great experience at best. And the secret of life is to reproduce that experience as often as possible. Even when one has been wounded by it, Harry. Especially when one has been wounded by it. are flirting disgracefully with him. You had better take care. He is very fascinating. If he were not, there would be no battle. I shall write it in my diary tonight. What? That a burnt child loves the fire. Are you very much in love with him? I wish I knew. Knowledge would be fatal. It is the uncertainty that charms one. A mist makes things wonderful. One may lose one's way. All ways end at the same point, my dear lady. What is that? Dissolution. It was my debut in life. Has he never been jealous? I wish he had been. It's easy to be cynical. It doesn't take time to get angry. But you know what? Most of the time, this anger is nothing but all the sorrow and all the things that hurt, that have kept on hurting. And apparently crying about it somehow just wasn't the option. Being misunderstood perhaps hurts the most. You know, it isn't even about appreciation. It just is about acknowledgement most of the time. When, when you let somebody in, in the deepest crevices of your craziness, probably expecting a little respect, about what that shit means to you. The intensity, the gravity, the value, the reason why that hurts. And when it takes an artistic form, when a poet puts you in his poem, when a painter captures you on a canvas, when a musician composes a melody that screams of you. Is it worth anything at all? That's where I end this part. Till then, please follow, share, subscribe, comment.
check out my Insta page, send me some messages, and simplify the fuck out of everything. Quote. Nowadays, people know the price of everything and the value of nothing. Unquote. An artist and his muse. It's the most sacred thing to exist. The very inspiration behind his art, something that gives the art its essence. The artist knows the value of that. What if the muse refuses to see, understand the gravity or value, emotions, feelings, worship, anything? And everything that was put behind that art. What kind of a heartbreak is that? Quote. Dorian, from the moment I met you, your personality had the most extraordinary influence over me. I was dominated, soul, brain and power by you. You became to me the visible incarnation of that unseen idol whose memory haunts us artists like an exquisite dream. I worship you. I grew jealous of everyone to whom you spoke. I wanted to have you all to myself. I was only happy when I was with you. When you were away from me, you were still present in my art. Of course, I never let you know anything about this. It would have been impossible. You would not have understood it. I hardly understood it myself. I only knew that I had seen perfection face to face and that the world had become wonderful to my eyes. Too wonderful perhaps, for in such mad worship, there is peril, the peril of losing them, no less than the peril of keeping them. But I know that as I worked at it, every flake and film of color seemed to me to reveal my secret. I grew afraid that others would know of my idolatry. I felt, Dorian, that I had told too much, that I had put too much of myself into the painting. I cannot help feeling that it is a mistake to think that the passion one feels in creation is ever really shown in the work one creates. Art is always more abstract than we fancy. Form and color tells us of forms and colors. That is all. It often seems to me that art conceals the artist far more completely than it ever reveals him. Whatever I have done that is good, I owe to you. Uh, You don't know what it cost me to tell you all that I have told you. My dear Basil, what have you told me? Simply that you felt you admired me too much. That is not even a compliment. It was not intended as a compliment. It was a confession. Now that I have made it, something seems to have gone out of me. Perhaps one should never put one's worship into words. A strange sense of loss came over him. Basil felt that Dorian Gray would never again be to him all that he had been in the past. Life had come between them. Unquote.